The AMA Motocross Championship presented by FMF continues its Northeastern swing. We are at the famous Unadilla track in New Berlin, New York for the FMF Pro Motocross National presented by Scott USA. It is round six. We're at the halfway point of the season here. I'm Brian Drebber along with David Pingree, Aaron Bates and a great crowd of Sun Soak fans here out to enjoy an afternoon of motocross racing. I'm glad you could join us. Pingree, it's going to be fun. These people filing in here, and Unadilla is always a great place to go. Yeah, the Unadilla fans are always fun. You know, these guys are loud, and they get into it. Uh, you wouldn't know it by looking at the weather today. It's nice out, but yesterday, rain was coming down hard. You can see the grass. The, the starting line hasn't even been touched yet, uh, but they've got it plowed up, man. It was muddy at the end of yesterday. We had some showers come through and really make a mess of the place, so uh, the crews worked hard. I think with the sunshine today, the track should be great. A few changes to that track as points leader Michael Lessey gets a few instructions here from his dad at the last minute. They took out uh, the uphill hairpin on the back side of the track. They got some new switchbacks. More on that later as Michael Lessey gets ready to go racing here this weekend. You know, the changes they did, did make to the track were uh, supposed to slow it down, uh, get the guys the speeds down a little bit. This Unadilla is notoriously fast. Uh, but what it's done, there's some mixed reviews. Some people think it made it a little too one-lined, a little more tough to pass now. Well, we saw Michael Essie and Ryan Villapoto. They are atop the point standings. How about Brett Metcalf riding a new wave of popularity? Yeah, it's definitely good to have you know, the teams kind of approaching me instead of me, you know, hey, can I get a ride or something? So and that's nice, but right now I'm just focusing on the championship. We're still in the hunt, so uh, that's my main goal is to get out there and do well. That's good to see Brett doing well. Uh, he's had a couple years just plagued with injury, and now he's he's got Pro Circuit knocking down his door, as well as Yamaha Troy, who's uh, looking at another manufacturer for next year. So uh, he's got all kinds of options, and, and uh, that's a good feeling to have. How about Josh Grant? He's had kind of an up and down year. As we look at uh, a few of the other riders, Robert Marshall, and in practice, most of these riders go out, and sometimes it gives us an indication of who's fast, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, these first practices, particularly when you've got a rainy day like it was Saturday, you can see how muddy the track is. These guys are just trying to work some lines in, maybe shake the bugs out, get a little sweat going, but uh, you're not going to turn real fast laps when it's deep, soupy mud like this. Brett Metcalf showing us some of that mud there as he works his way around the track in practice. And we continue to uh, look Brian Gray here, and Ryan Sipes is back on the number 36. Good to see him out there again. Not among the fastest in practice. That honor went to Brock Hepler with Alessi and Villapoto, the points leaders, though. But let's uh, check in with Ryan Sipes. I've been out for a long time, so these guys don't know what I, you know what I've been up to. But I've been working real hard, and uh, I've been hurt, but I think I actually learned a lot while I was off. And uh, I'm just out there to run with the front guys. Last year I was kind of behind that front battle, and I'm going to be in it this year. So. The starting line and the gates ready for the competition. Ryan Sipes is right there, and he's ready to go. But one of the Kawasaki riders is missing. Here's Aaron Bates. And then there were two. Pro Circuit Kawasaki riders, that is. American rookie season is over for former MX world champ Ben Townley as he entered the season six months late and only got one race under his belt. When after Red Bud went over to Ricky Carmichael's house and had a crash, separated his shoulder, has now returned to New Zealand, and it's not yet confirmed as when he'll be back. The good news is that the team's planning on having two of their teammates come back, Chris Gosser making his return at Washougal, and former champ Grant Langston hoping to make a return at Millville, but not yet confirmed. Things are starting to look up for the rest of the team. Yeah, it's too bad for Townley. I mean, he showed a lot of speed at Red Bud when he did come back, and he had a terrible knee injury, uh, completely destroying that knee now, separated shoulder that may or may not need surgery. So pretty much ends his season here, his first season, which uh, had to be sort of chalked up as a loss. Well, we hope to see Ben Townley back. He certainly gave us some moments the one time we did see him here on the AMA Motocross Championship. Take a look at our Honda starting lineup. Alessi, Villapoto, Grant, top guys all seated by points. The rest of the field by their uh, practice times and qualifying. And this is the way they will start. We don't yet know how they'll finish, but we're pretty sure it's going to be a good race here. Motocross lights getting ready to go at Unadilla. With that, it's going to be the usual land rush start here across the starting gate. Keep an eye out for the number 51 and the number 800, Villapoto and Alessi. Always the contenders here, especially Alessi on the start. And it looks as though the number 800, Michael Alessi, gets the whole shot out in front, just in front of Josh Grant, number 24. Grant on the Honda comes inside into second position. One of the Yamahas, and it's Metcalf, I believe, in third. But there's Michael Alessi, your leader, on the, red, on the Red Bull KTM. 
It's actually Andrew McFarland there in third. He's uh, been consistent all year. He's up front again. Well, McFarland and Metcalf, hard to tell them apart on the racetrack. They're both running up front on those blue Boost Mobile Yamaha Troy machines. And that's Zach Osborne, the young rookie kid in fourth place. He's shown a couple of great rides this year. Had a little bit of problem with his fitness, but uh, you know that's typical for an amateur kid. He's shown that he's got the speed to run up front, and uh, the training and fitness, that, that's going to come later. Alessi out in front. We're looking at McFarland here, and we continue to watch Zach Osborne, the number 168, the front runners here. There's a good look at uh, it is Andrew McFarland and not Metcalf. Metcalf a few spots further back on the sister bike to that one. But, uh, we got a good scramble going here. Alessi got a great start. We're used to seeing that, and he is trying to get away. This is one of the new sections of the track, these little zigzags and bumps that they throw in. Uh, tightened it up quite a bit, slowed it down, but. Uh, as you can see, the tight corners just make deep ruts on the inside, and it's real tough to go around anybody. Andrew Short on the number 29. He's had flashes of brilliance this season, and we're looking for big things out of Shorty, who finished up the Supercross here in great style. He's looking good here at Unadilla. One thing we should mention, they spent a lot of time trying to sift those infamous rocks out of the dirt here, and so for the time being, at least, the track's in pretty good shape. Yeah, that's, that's what Unadilla is notorious for. You'll see... Uh, all these riders running hand guards, most of them running chest protectors, nose guards on their goggles, anything to block those uh, rocks. I mean, they're literally baseball or uh, grapefruit-sized rocks that can be coming at, up at you. And they did do a lot of sifting to pull them out, but when it rained, they had to come in and till the soil up to get the moisture out of it, and that brought up even more rocks. So now, I mean, you can see them scattered across the track there. Uh, those things hurt, man, when they hit you. Ryan Villapoto with what we have also got it, gotten used to with his style. Not the greatest start, but he begins picking off riders one by one, and he seems to ride himself in towards the finish rather than get that good start that most people would prefer. Well, I know he's been working on his starts with Randy Lawrence a lot. They, they know that's a, a weak spot for him right now, and he could make it a lot easier on himself if he was starting up front where Alessi does. But uh, sometimes when you're in a funk, you're just getting bad starts. You kind of go somebody. Somebody's day just took a turn for the worst. Danny Smith going down, and while it didn't look like it was all that serious, Danny's in, a, in some discomfort there, and he's going to go over and rest on the tough blocks or on the hay bales in this case. He was holding his kidney. That's, that's not good. So Danny Smith crashing out of the top ten there, getting some encouragement from the mechanics area. These guys get pretty wound up. You know, they can't do much except wave a towel or show a board out there once the bikes are prepared and in the hands of the riders. Well, those guys work hard all week, man. I mean, the mechanics in this sport are putting in so many hours. They're way underpaid for the work they do. Uh, and they get into it, man. They, these guys are behind their riders 100%, and uh, they want to win as bad as the riders do. Well, Josh Grant has got up behind Mike Alessi right now, and it looked like he might have a little bit of a challenge for him there for the moment. Now he falls into the same rut and has to follow the number 800 KTM around. Alessi, a little weak off the top of that one, allows the number 24 of Grant to get a little closer to him, and we've got a race for the lead here in Moto1. Well, Josh Grant's led several times this year in motos, particularly at Redbud. Looked like he was going to check out and get his first moto win of the season and stalled his bike. Uh, ended up finishing back a little bit, so... I know he wants to get a win really, really bad, at least a moto win, if not an overall. And, uh, this is a great chance for him. He's got Alessi right in front of him. Well, should he try to make something happen quickly, or should he be patient and see if he can't figure, figure out a way to make one pass and make it stick? I, I think here you try to get by quick. Like I said, these rocks, that's like having uh, Randy Johnson sit there and throw fastballs at you all day. Uh, you got to get by somebody when they're, when they're right in front of you like that, or let them gap out a little bit, Try to sit back, watch their lines, and then charge up on them and make a pass. All the leaders heading up the hill here as we see the battle up front. Alessi doing a good job of holding off Grant for the time being. The crowd is loving this, of course. When you get good battles for first and second, not far behind is the third place machine, number 124 of McFarland. And then we see the number 29 there of Andrew Short. I don't know if you watched how fast Alessi went through that rut in that last turn, but. Uh, the kid's great at long ruts like that. You know, it's very hard where you've got to kind of turn, straighten out, turn again. Uh, he made it look like one giant rut, and I don't think he ever chopped the throttle. There is a battle for just outside the top 10. We're looking at the number 36. We mentioned Ryan Sipes is back. He's racing back there with Matt Walker, number 122, also on the Yamaha Troy team. Through the signal area once again. McFarland, Shorty. And Ryan Villapoto, who normally would have passed a couple of guys about this time and start heading towards the leader, but he's having a rough go of it here. Not able to get around uh, short 
and up to McFarland, and the leaders are quite a bit further ahead. As long as he can keep him in sight to where he can see him, he's okay. He's uh, he's still close enough to where he's in striking distance. These are long motos and plenty of time to make up uh, make up room. So Villapoto running in fifth position right now, short fourth, McFarland third. The two leaders are Michael Essie and Josh Grant. Short, there's Villapoto on his Kawasaki Pro Circuit team. Is certainly taking it, taking a few hits. And they've plowed a lot of this track before these motos, but uh, you can see how deep those ruts are and how uh, big the bumps have already gotten. A lot of that's due to the rain. When, the, when this dirt gets uh, that soft, it'll bump, it'll rut up and bump up real big. Take another look here at an opportunistic pass as Andrew Short goes around the number 124 of McFarland. Yeah, McFarland just swapped a little bit. If you don't get over all those bumps, you lose all your momentum, and that's critical here. See, Villapoto can't double up. Gives it everything he's got, but uh, a little short. He almost, lost some time. Yeah, almost cased it there. That could have been a disaster. He gets back on the gas. Now he's got some ground to make up. So we'll take a short commercial break here. Great crowd enjoying our, our race at Unadilla. The lights at Unadilla, the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship by FMF continues here up to the halfway point of the season, watching that third, fourth, and fifth place battle. It's still Villapoto fifth. He's trying to make a move on Andrew McFarland. You can see all these guys running the hand guards, chest protectors. Anything to block those rocks. I've seen guys come away from this race with uh, chipped teeth, uh, even broken collarbones from getting hit with rocks. So you really got to take that extra precaution. Another look at McFarland taking a look back at Ryan Villapoto here as the two come almost side by side. The number 51 Kawasaki getting the inside position there. And I think McFarland knew he was coming. Yeah, I think he's probably glancing back to find out who was making all that noise right behind him. So uh, Villapoto let him know. Racing continues, Andrew Short made the pass. He's moving up towards the two leaders now as he's getting closer still to Josh Grant and of course to Michael Essie. There's Grant right in front of him, so Short could really uh, have a good opportunity here to move up a spot and it would be the second place. Now this is a great battle and this is far from over. You got Alessi's right in front of these two and Villapoto's closing in on these guys. So uh, this win is still up in the air for anybody. Right now it's Josh Grant, then it's Andrew Short, both on Hondas. Michael Essie on his KTM up front, Ryan Villapoto in fourth place, and McFarlane on the 124, slipping back a distant fifth at this point. There's a look at all four leaders. Short third, Villapoto fourth, and they're all evenly spaced around the racetrack here. No one is running away with this one yet. Downhill section of the racetrack. Again, a few changes made to the layout itself and a great deal of work put in to try to sift some of the rocks out of the surface here. We do see a few of them starting to pop up every now and then. It's definitely uh, an improvement. One of the fastest sections of the track there when you come by the mechanics, side the mechanics area here. You can see Villapoto using that wide line, just never letting off run that whole thing. A look at Michael Essie, not only the points leader, but the leader on the track here at Moto number one, riding his Red Bull KTM. Lessie doing a good job to get the whole shot, making his job as easy as possible. Leading, no one's throwing rocks at him until he gets into a little bit of traffic if that's going to happen. Here's a move for second place as Andrew Short challenging Josh Grant. Can't quite get it done. Grant holds on. Short makes a mistake, and Villapoto might get him. When you're behind a battle like that, that's kind of to Villapoto's advantage. He can sit right behind Grant, and as Grant tries to make something happen with Andrew Short, it's easy for Villapoto to sneak by because Grant's having to run different lines to try to pass short. Villapoto can jump into that main line and uh, just put himself in front of him. Josh Grant in second position. Andrew Short third. Ryan Villapoto way wide again. And as you said, he's following the man two spots in front of him, leaving uh, the dirt and roost that Andrew Short is throwing for somebody else. Now it seems like Ryan's got, uh, in a lot of these places, different lines than these guys. He's running either real wide or real tight. and. Uh, He's good at that, picking lines uh, maybe that aren't what everyone else is running, but it allows him to stay out of the bumps, stay out of the ruts, and uh, have a little something left for late in the moto. There again, you see him. He's outside of the main line. Villapoto in fourth position, trying to move up to a podium spot. And he would have to take Andrew Short and also Josh Grant. 
And they're having their own battle going on a pair of Hondas. Short getting close. Grant not really gaining anything on Alessi. But again, as you said, it's early and it's a long moto. These guys may be pacing themselves just a little bit, and as long as they're close, they can make something happen. Yeah, it's shaping up to be good. Nobody's pulling away from anybody. Everyone's got the same opportunity at this point. Still watching Ryan Villapoto take very different lines. And every time we see him, he's in a different rut, the guy in front of him. Down the hill, Ryan Villapoto carrying a lot of speed through there, and that's what he does. You said he does it so well. He just carries speed through the turns and makes up his distance there. Yeah, and if you watch in that corner there, that left-hander earlier, he was about a foot inside of where Grant was. He just stays out of those deep ruts, and uh, it works for him. There again, he's going right around the outside of him. We'd have to say worked past tense because he's made the move up into third position. Ryan Villapoto with one big, smooth turn takes over a spot. Here's our Toyota leaderboard. Riding tip with Team Suzuki and David Pingree. Well, this week we're looking at ruts that are very, very close to the inside corner marker and maybe have a little bit of a hump in them. Here you can see this rut, kind of a little bump in the turn, and the rut goes right through it. So as you watch Sipes come through here, can't really lean the bike over that far. Your, your handlebar will hit the inside corner marker, grab your front brake. That's going to make you go down. If you lean over too far, uh, your foot peg, your brake pedal is going to grab the ground. That's not good. So you see kind of coming in, standing up. Keep the bike upright. You don't want to lean it too much. And then as he comes out of the turn, then he leans in, gets going down the straightaway. Ah, the subtleties of motocross racing. Our riding tip with Team Suzuki. Back to the action now here at the FMF Pro Motocross National presented by Scott USA. Ryan Villapoto all over the back of 24 Josh, uh, I'm sorry, Andrew Short on the 29 who made the pass on Grant. So we've got things changing up front and Alessi the leader is right there too. I'm still impressed with Villapoto's line choice. I always like watching where this kid's going to go because it's never where the guys in front of him are going. And uh, sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's the same, but it seems like he always makes it work. Just a little bit different everywhere. You see even there. So Josh Grant back in fourth position. Villapoto working on Shorty for second. And you know that Andrew Short can tell he's coming. Here comes that Kawasaki up beside. They're in the air together. Big jump, land together. Villapoto on one side and Short on the other. Villapoto with the long way around. Better drive up the hill. Gives a little bit of a look over and just like that gets it done. That's why this kid's fun to watch. He was actually off the track at one point coming down that hill. But he just makes these lines work. He carries so much more momentum around the turns than these guys. So Ryan Villapoto now up to second position. And only Michael Lessie is in front of him. This is worth another look. You watch here, he actually lands off the track. You see the yellow markers, has to cut it back in. Doesn't even bother chopping the throttle. He grabs another gear and just keeps it pinned around the outside. So Villapoto now moving into second with that nice move and a little bit of a look over at Andrew Short. Heading towards the leader, Mike Alessi, but with all the rate. Oh, and somebody's down. It's a lap rider, I think. Let's see, Kawasaki, Steven Stella out of Westminster, Maryland. Lapper goes down in front of a battle here. Brock Hepler back in seventh position, seeing the number 60 go by, the Suzuki. He showed a lot of promise there at uh, Bud's Creek coming back, getting a, getting a second, but uh, having some troubles here today. Hepler, the winner here a year ago. Villapoto trying really hard now to get up to Mike Alessi with laps winding down. Alessi, the leader, looked like he had a pretty comfortable margin, but the way Ryan Villapoto comes through the field, He's not only exciting to watch, but it's a very, very efficient way to get the job done, at least if you're Ryan Villapoto. Well, he's running these such wide lines that he's knocking down these uh, yellow track markers like bowling pins. If uh, they were charging these guys for breaking them, he'd have himself a pretty steep bill at the end of the year. Ryan Villapoto on the downhill section. Great bike control. Michael Alessi just in front of him now. Not more than 10, 12 bike lengths separating the two. Alessi, let's see if he can maintain his poise. And this is kind of a, a mini version of the points championship as well. Alessi the leader, Villapoto just a few points back. Alessi the leader on the track, Ryan Villapoto just a few yards behind him. And the battle between these two just keeps getting bigger and bigger every week. They've had a rivalry, obviously, ever since they were mini bike kids. Uh, and, and, and a little bit of mental stuff going on here, too. If uh, Villapoto knows he's caught up to Alessi, he knows Alessi knows that. You know, he's running faster lap times. That's going to get in Mike's head, even if Mike wins this moto. So it's real important for Ryan here not to uh, back off. You know, make sure when the checkered flag drops, Ryan's closed up on him as much as he possibly can. And I think what you're saying, too, is for Ryan Villapoto not to try too hard to make the point. He's already made the point he's faster. Whether he gets up there and makes a pass and uh, damages his chances in the process would be another thing. 
Well, obviously those three points between first and second are critical, but if he can't get them, at least show Mike that he's faster. And the next moto is going to be uh, another race to the finish. Michael Lessie out front of number 800 KTM. He's been there ever since the drop of the gate. Ryan Villapoto, we saw him in fifth position, has moved all the way up to second, leaving everyone in his wake except Michael Lessie. A lot of fun here at Motocross Lights, as you said. Great rival rivalries make for great racing, and these two nearly lifelong rivals are giving us not only a battle for the win here in Moto One, but a battle for the championship. Lessie watching the form of the young man who seems as though he's been a motocross racer in the national level all his life. Ryan Villapoto, same thing, coming up through the amateur ranks together, beating on each other since they were little kids on little bikes. And Alessi takes a look back at him, and now he really knows he's there. Mike Alessi, though, will take the checkered flag. Villapoto runs out of time. Center is in the books. The fans moving around a little bit in between motos here to find another spot, get some refreshments, whatever. As we take a look at the Suzuki results for moto number one, Alessi Villapoto and Andrew Short on the podium. Brett Metcalf rounding out the top five. And, now, and uh, as we look at all the rest of the names here, each and every one of them, of course, having their best race. Let's go first to Andrew Short. Andrew Short making it happen. Look as though you're riding with a little bit of aggression out there this time, Andrew. <laughs> Not enough. Uh, those friends here were pulling away at the end and a little disappointed. I got a little flustered when Ryan got by me. I tried some of his runs and I couldn't make it work. But uh, there's always moto number two and I'd love to battle with those guys. And uh, hopefully my Honda gets me off to another great start. Ryan Villapoto keeping his momentum going. Ryan, it looked as though you were getting stronger as the race went on. Yeah, you know, I uh, finally got into second and we're just kind of working on Mike. and. Uh, it's really one line, so I was just kind of maybe hoping for a mistake to help me out, and uh, I never got it. You know, Mike rode good, and uh, can't say enough for my monster pusher, Kawasaki. Take a look at our Racer X hole shot. More often than not, it is Mike Alessi, and this time it was the number 800 KTM again. Gets to the white line, picks up the bonus, and of course we know he won the moto as well. Mike Alessi, still your points leader. Mike, you were able to make it happen once again. You yeah, got the start you've been looking for, but it looks as though you've actually got your motivation back as well. Yeah, you know, I wanted to keep pushing out there. You know, Ryan was going really fast. And we were one, two, I, I think a whole race. I'm not exactly sure, but I know at the end he was right there. He was pushing hard, but I pushed just a little bit harder. I noticed something different that you rode this time in your first moto. You weren't looking back like you normally do to check on what's going on behind you or focus on what was taking place ahead. Yeah, you know, I was sick this week, and, uh, you know, I had tonsillitis and uh, strep throat. And, I couldn't ride or train all week since last Saturday, so I'm just glad to be up here on the box and better to win. Great job. Good luck in Moto2. Thank you. Our congratulations to Michael Essie as well. Nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA writes, riding, and our favorite part, racing. Well, if you take a look at Michael Lessie's wrist up there on the podium, he wears these little sweatbands on his wrist that uh, he's convinced keep him from getting arm pumps. So a little uh, bit of trivia there for you. Well, with that, let's go to a flashback all the way to 1989. Number seven, Jeff Stanton on the factory Honda. Getting ready to take to the track here is Jeff Ward. We still see him racing Supermoto. That's what he looked like. Not much different back there on the number five. Jean-Michel Bale came over and pretty much handed everybody their hats at this one. As he makes a move there on Stanton. We're also seeing Rick Johnson on the factory Honda out there as well. Well, no matter what you think of uh, French riders, you got to be impressed with John Michel Bale. He was so smooth and just so fluid with the motorcycle. There you see RJ, still the bad boy. Wearing the number one, the national champion at that time. But Jean Michel Bale was the man here in the 500 National at Unadilla 1989, putting on a show for the crowd. One of the greats of motocross. Back to today, and the young man who won moto number one, Michael Essie, getting set to go for moto two. Work in the Unadilla Valley Sports Center, AMA Toyota Motocross Championship by FMF. Before we get started with moto two, let's go to Aaron Bates. In between motos, I was able to catch up with the Rockstar Suzuki team and find out just why the number three bike of Mike Brown wasn't on the starting gate. During practice this afternoon, once again, he blew up a motor 
and this has been happening a little bit too consistently for him this season. Earlier on in the season, it was suspension problems, but due to him riding at such high RPMs, his bike is once again seized. We're going to see him come back, miss Colorado, but come back for Washougal in the 450, riding in the motocross class. Well, it's always tough when Brownie's not out there. He's one of the great guys that we enjoy. Here's our Honda starting lineup, of course, based on the results somewhat from Moto number one. Well, the Rockstar Suzuki team, those guys are uh, definitely a great looking team, but uh, with any first year team, they're going to have some struggles. And uh, it seems like they're having a few mechanicals here and there, but uh, great, great bunch of guys. And uh, I'm sure they'll be back strong as ever next year. Moto two, the gates are down and off we go. Will Michael Lessie get the whole shot again and pull away out front? Don't see the number 800 this time. Instead, it appears as though it's one of the Hondas. And I believe that is going to be the number 24, Josh Grant who turned a second place start from Moto1 into a lead here in Moto2. McFarland's up there again, I see. He's been uh, very, very consistent with his starts. And I believe, oh, it's Nathan Ramsey this time up front. Nathan Ramsey on the number 25, coming through into second position, taking over that spot. So a different look up front. Ryan Villapoto fifth again. And well, let's make it fourth as he goes into this turn right now. So Villapoto starting to move up just a little bit earlier. He's into fourth position now as we have a challenge for the lead between Nathan Ramsey and Josh Grant. Steve Boniface got a great start as well on the Buku Honda, running third. Boniface up there completing the front three on the number 141. Steve's had some great rides this year. Bud's Creek uh, ran up front for quite a while, so uh, his, his speed is definitely there, and uh, those guys are another great team that's that's been uh, making a, a a presence on the Nationals and Supercross Series this year. Grant, Ramsey, Boniface, Villapoto, and McFarland in that order coming through the tight part of the track here. Deep rut starting to form already as, oh, look at this. Ramsey's got a notion to try to get around Josh Grant. Grant demonstrating that he is vulnerable. Once he gets out in front, it isn't a given that he'll stay there. There's Ramsey, 31 years old, chasing the youngster Grant. They actually list his age on that page, huh? Because uh, he'll tell you he's 27. and has been for about the last five years. That's a common malady among racers and actors, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Josh Grant, Nathan Ramsey, and now Villapoto moves quickly into third spot, getting around Steve Boniface. So Villapoto, runner-up in motor number one, runner-up in the points championship at this juncture of the season, is uh, making an earlier move toward the front. And the roles are reversed this year, or this moto. You got a, Le a Alessi back in about eighth or ninth. Didn't get a great start. Villapoto closer to the front. So we'll see if Alessi can come forward and, and what uh, Villapoto does with a better start. Well, the MO, method of operation, if those of you that don't know the abbreviation for Michael Alessi is that if he gets a good start and he's out front, he's fine. But he has more difficulty, let's just say, than Ryan Villapoto trying to come up from the back or up from fifth, sixth, seventh position. I mean, this class is so stacked with talent. The guys are, are very, very close in lap times, all of them, the top 15 riders, let's just say. Uh, so to come from anywhere back there towards the front is very, very tough. Unless you're a guy like Villapoto, who, as we saw, running very different lines, seems to be able to carry a little more speed through turns, uh, it's, it's tough to go by him. He's getting ready to make a move here. He's certainly shown a wheel to Nathan Ramsey. Ryan Villapoto, there it goes. Inside, he pulls up, can't quite get it done. Ramsey cuts him off on the front wheel. So Ryan Villapoto is working it, working it, working it, but hasn't made it work just yet. Now watch this kid's line choice. It, to me, it's, it's just so fun to watch because it's so uh, unique and creative. He's, he's very, very different than any other rider. There, you see him going wide into that turn. Looks like he actually loses ground, but he makes it up eventually. So. Uh, just fun to watch him. He connects the dots in very different ways. Riders often talk about connecting the dots from one turn to another, looking for turn in points and so forth. But Ryan Villapoto just has a different way of connecting those dots, and it works for him. Well, it's very easy when you're behind a guy. Uh, I know David Bailey used to always say, never follow a guy for more than uh, one or two turns, or you'll, you'll get sucked into just following his, his rear tire and running his lines. And you're obviously not going to make a pass if you're running the guy's same exact lines. And, and Villapoto is great at that, just he never follows. He's always in a different line. Like I said, even if he has to lose a little time somewhere, uh, it's like he'll make it back up somewhere else. So, uh, and it works for him. You can see he's one of the few guys that can come through the pack. Oh, nice move inside right there, but he just tried a little too hard to make that one work. It could have worked, but it didn't. And Nathan Ramsey holds on to the number two spot for the time being. It's still Josh Grant out front. Not by much, though. Here, Grant's got another great opportunity to get a Moto win that he's been looking for all year. Definitely has the speed. 
uh, just hasn't come together for him yet. So this could be his motive. Andrew Short up into fourth position. He too making a charge to the front. Boniface slipping back a little bit, as does McFarland. And Ryan Villapoto working on second place. And he is just wild around the outside right there, but carries so much speed up the hill. This is what he does so well. Cuts it back on the inside now to try, try to take it going downhill. Different line, can't, their, their speeds are almost identical even though they're on two different parts of the track. Well, Ricky Carmichael himself has said he loves watching uh, Ryan ride. Reminds him of himself when he was younger. And these two draw so many similarities, you know, short, stocky, red-headed kids. Uh, ride for, rode for Pro Circuit Kawasaki in the early stages of their career. They both won Supercrosses and Nationals. One's RC, one's RV. Uh, there, there's so many similarities to draw between the two. And, uh, just watching him ride like there, right there, get his feet off the peg, but just staying in the throttle. That's typical RC, you know, classic RC back when, when he was on 125s back then. Nathan Ramsey with all of his experience and using every bit of it to try to stay in front of Villapoto. This is the best race on the track because Andrew Short is right there as well on the Honda, number 29. <laughs> you see Shorty just launch out of gravity cavity there. Those guys don't even bother trying to scrub. They just pin it. Our Toyota leaderboard tells the story. The leaders in moto number two. Where is moto one winner Michael Essie? Well, just before we went to commercial, you could see he was back in eighth position, but look at the front four. This looks more like a parade than a race. They're just going really fast. Here comes Ramsey up the outside, trying to make something happen. Grant, but Villapoto gets in between them, goes from third to second briefly, back to third. Andrew Short is right there. He moves past Villapoto for a moment. And then Villapoto with the inside line, just looked down at his bike for a second there. Wow, look at this. Oh, and Ramsey, both of them stall out up front. Ramsey gets the lead. And wow, this is great racing. This battle right here is worth the uh, cost of your admission ticket. This is what you came to see. Nathan Ramsey takes the lead. And coming up beside him, Josh Grant trying to get it back. The youngster wants it. He gets it back. Josh Grant with the lead. Ramsey is there. Villapoto's all the way back to fourth position. And Andrew Short's challenging for second. Wow. Up the hill, these guys are going wild here. You know they're excited. Yeah, it, they are, and I'll tell you what, it's very hard to continue this type of pace. When you start battling with guys, it gets you out of your flow, you forget to breathe normally, uh, your heart rate can jump way up. So with these guys racing like that, it, it's going to definitely have, have to take a toll <clears throat> on their fitness. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see who's got something left in the tank here at the end of the moto when they're battling like this. Andrew Short, full on the gas, up the hill, takes a look over at Nathan Ramsey, runs him a little wide. Josh Grant is your leader, and the real battle now for second position. Here comes Ryan Villapoto, took a couple of deep breaths, and he's trying to get back into rhythm again, too. Wow. Ramsey. Another thing that can happen here, you see Ramsey and Short now in a, in a battle. This could allow Grant to slip away. You can see him starting to gap a little bit. He could check out here if these two really start getting into it. And you see him looking over at each other. Shorty shaking his head a little bit. He probably can't believe what a battle he's in the middle of. Here goes Ryan Villapoto around Ramsey for third. And they're still nose to tail, wheel to wheel. Josh Grant, the leader on the 24. There's Andrew Short on the 29 Honda. He goes up inside trying to make something happen. Well, he knows if he doesn't get by Grant now, he's got Villapoto all over him, and Villapoto's going to go by him. So uh, he's in a situation where he's got to move. All right, they've spread out a little bit. Nathan Ramsey bringing up the rear of the parade at this point. We're going to take a breath, but now we're just going to have to start hyperventilating again. Look at this. Around the tree, they almost touch. Down the hill, Andrew Short, Josh Grant, Ryan Villapoto, and Nathan Ramsey. And you couldn't get four bikes any closer together than that on a motocross track. Up the inside goes Short. And Josh Grant can't answer for the time being. Andrew Short with the lead. Two different runs up the hill. Shorty's got the advantage right now. And I think Ramsey moved into third around Villapoto again. No. So now it's Andrew Short out front on the number 29. Josh Grant, he's going to have to deal with fighting the dirt and rocks going at him. Spreading out just a little bit. Very tight left-hander here. Ryan Villapoto third, Nathan Ramsey fourth. Looks like Metcalf or McFarland perhaps sneaking up there in fifth position. Now 
short. There's a Lassie back, back in sixth. Wow. Seventh position, sixth just in front of him. Michael Lessi. Steve Boniface is the one on the, on the number 141 in sixth position. Alessi trying to move up. Every point is critical. And right now, it's difficult to say, doing the math, whether Ryan Villapoto or Michael Lessi is the points leader. Yeah, all these points count for these guys right now. At this point in the series, the, the points are so close. Uh, every moto counts, and, and these guys could start going back and forth in the championship points lead, depending on who finishes better in a moto. Michael Essie up to sixth position around Steve Boniface right now, but they are quite a ways behind the battle up front. And here it is for the lead. It is Andrew Short, and now Ryan Villapoto has got it, gotten around Josh Grant. Grant fading a little bit here in the late going. We've seen that before. And a little bit of lap traffic as they move through. I think that was Willie Toth out of Pennsylvania on the 218. Wow, great battle in here with Moto2 winding down. Ryan Villapoto doing one of his nearly patented charges up through the field, riding the back wheel. You can see him from the far left side of the track to the far right. Now he's back over to the far left again. Leaping up into definite contention here. They are wheel to wheel, everything but. Better speed going down the hill. Villapoto with a, no, it wasn't exactly a block pass, but he had the line on the inside and got it done. His <laughs> off, the oh, off the track, we've seen that before in Moto One. He's using a little bit extra. And his lines are going to really start to play into his favor now when, when uh, the track, second moto, it's gotten really rough. The ruts that were working in the first moto now, they're chunked out. They're not working as well. So his lines that are far outside, they're going to start working better. In the sandbox here as we're looking at the battle for sixth, McFarlane and Alessi. Mike Alessi, winner of moto number one, trying to minimize the damage to his points championship lead and trying to hold on to a spot that may be all he's going to get in this one. Well, this is something, uh, if Mike has a weakness, it's, it's got to be the fact that he doesn't come to the front of the pack as well as Villapoto does when he gets a bad start. And if he wants to win this title, he's either got to continue to pull hole shots or he's got to get better at, at getting himself into the front, up on the, at least in the top three by the end of the moto. Now, he had the position on Brett Metcalf briefly, but Metcalf on the Yamaha has come back to take it away again. And now Alessi is losing ground. So, indeed, moving forward, getting Getting to the front and staying there is his forte, Michael Essie. Moving forward is not. And that's become more obvious as we continue through this 2006 outdoor motocross season. White flag, last lap. He's holding on to that position. He doesn't want to give it up. Ran uh, Met, uh, McFarlane into the barriers there. Out of the third position now as the two leaders out in front, Ryan Villapoto and Andrew Short have left these two behind. They've got their own little battle, as I said. Everyone's found themselves a playmate in the sandbox here at Unadilla. Feet off the pegs there for Ramsey. This is, this is a chance for these guys to be up on the podium. You know, they run a podium uh, for each moto, and uh, that's that's a great opportunity for these guys, not only to feel like uh, their all their work during the week has paid off, but also a chance to get up there and thank their sponsors. And uh, it's important for these guys, even if this doesn't mean a third overall, which it may or may not, uh, it's important for them just to get up on the box and, uh, and show their sponsors some appreciation. Ryan Villapoto, the leader now in the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki. He has moved through the field very methodically to take the advantage, and now he's actually pulling away. No challenge to Ryan Villapoto at the moment on his number 51, Green Machine. This kid's had an incredible rookie season. I don't think uh, I've been as impressed with a rookie rider since Ricky Carmichael. Very, very impressive indeed. And as you said, there are so many similarities, you almost have to rub your eyes and pretend it isn't 10 years ago when Ricky Carmichael was the youngster on that pro circuit Kawasaki. Ryan Villapoto now unchallenged for the lead. We go back to Nathan Ramsey. He seems to be edging out a little bit of an advantage now on McFarlane. We'll see if McFarlane has anything for him on this final lap. This is for the third spot on the podium. Andrew Short, a lonely second place right now ahead of these two. Where is Josh Grant gone? Don't see him anywhere, but uh, it, actually there was word that he was sick, maybe fighting a little bit of a, a cold bug, but looks like he's dropped off the pace a little bit. 
Definitely faded here in the late going. Ryan Villapoto with only a few lap riders in front of him here on the final lap. The checkered flag is what he's waiting for. And with a second place in the first moto and a win in this one, he'll take the overall. Moving up uh, to another Kawasaki rider here, about to go a lap down. This is gonna put him in the points lead as well, so now he's in the driver's seat for this championship. Well, the rider avoids being lapped, and Ryan Villapoto picks up the win here, takes the checkered flag, and the fans at Unadilla have seen a wonderful performance. And now the mechanics are gonna congratulate him as well as we look at our Suzuki results for Moto2. Garland and Metcalf rounding out the top five. Grant goes back to six, still a, still a solid ride for him, especially if he's not feeling well. And Sipes, that's a solid ride in 11th for his first race back, so it's a good ride for him. Let's take a look at the highlight for this motocross lights, and boy, the highlight was certainly when the top four were all right together. Yeah, most of this moto was a highlight, but just watching these guys go back and forth and uh, bump into each other, knock each other out of lines like Ramsey's doing right there, feet off the pegs, that's just great racing. And with Josh Grant slipping back to sixth position, he actually led this race for quite a while. Battle with Nathan Ramsey. Villapoto was right there, and Andrew Short, who ended up being the top two. They were running third and fourth at this time, and I'm telling you what, pick a turn. The order was different almost every time they came around the track. We, we talked about how physically demanding it is in a battle like that. Maybe that's what happened to Grant. He kind of petered out a little bit with his cold that he's had, so uh, that might have been part of his problem. Our overall results, Ryan Villapoto with the win. 2-1, Andrew Short moves up to second overall, and Alessi held on to third position. Let's go first to Mike Alessi with Aaron Bates. Mike, off to a bad start for you, and then things kind of went downhill from there. You're struggling in the second moto. Yeah, definitely, you know, I, I got a bad start, and it's so hard to start from the back, and I was way back in about 20th, 15th, and on the third lap, I got stuck in a mud over there in the corner, and man, just not the moto I was looking for, you know, and. Uh, well, here are the point standings. Ryan Villapoto is your new leader, takes over the advantage by three, and had trailed coming in. Andrew Short rounding out the top three in our overall championship at the halfway mark. Well, after exhausting second moto, he's still smiling. Andrew, you had the lead there for quite some time, but Villapoto was able to catch up. What, what, what took place there? I don't know, that was a sprint for me. I got a horrible start and I moved up and I actually passed him early on and I was like, yeah, this is cool, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of threw the anchor out there at the end, but that's what I had to do to get up front and uh, a good day for me and Honda and good way to turn around last race. It was a little rough for me and I'm really looking forward to going to Colorado. Our Racer X hole shot from Moto2 a little different than the first time around. No Michael Essie, instead it was the number 24, Josh Grant, who nudged his wheel over the white line first. Villa podium yet again, Ryan, four so far this season. Can you believe it's the halfway point of the season? You're now leading the series by three points. Yeah, you know, I just uh, try to be consistent. And, you know, I've got four wins on my belt. And, you know, I think it helps me out is, uh, you know, getting the points lead. And, uh, you know, Mike got, uh, I don't know what he got that moto, but he finished back, which let me, uh, you know, gain the points is uh, three points in front. So, you know, it helped me out a whole bunch. Well, a new points leader going to the second half of the season off to Colorado, and we're looking forward to that as well. That's right, that's Andrew Short's home track, and you can't help but like Shorty. The guy's always got a smile on his face, uh, regardless of what happens, and uh, such a great guy. So hopefully he can get up front again and, and, and race with these guys for the lead at his home track in Colorado next weekend. Well, we'll be there, and we hope you will join us. For Aaron Bates and David Pingree, I'm Brian Drebber. So long, everybody.